Want to know the real pros and cons of living in Chattanooga, Tennessee? You're about to find out. This is Robert C. Baker with Move to Chattanooga and Cry Like Realtors, where we teach you everything you need to know about relocating to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, if this is your first time visiting the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, click like, and leave a comment down below. And if you haven't seen my Living in Chattanooga, What I Love and What I Hate video, be sure to watch that next. If you're not familiar with Chattanooga, Tennessee, here are a couple of quick facts about Scenic City, River City, and Gig City. Chattanooga, Tennessee has about 180,000 residents, although there are more than a half million people living in the greater Chattanooga area, which is comprised of six counties, including Hamilton County, where Chattanooga is situated. Chattanooga is located almost halfway between Nashville, Tennessee to the northwest and Atlanta, Georgia to the south, connected by I-24 and I-75. More on Chattanooga's location in just a moment. Now let's get to the pros and cons of living in Chattanooga, Tennessee, starting with the negatives first. Our first con is that Chattanooga, like the rest of Tennessee, has a reputation for tornadoes, not earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, or hurricanes, but rather tornadoes. First, let's talk about the state of Tennessee. Tennessee is not at the top of the list when it comes to tornadoes nationwide. The National Tennessean has a great article which shows that Tennessee ranks number nine among states for tornadoes per square mile and number 11 for average annual tornadoes. So Tennessee is not at the top of the list of U.S. states having tornadoes, but where in Tennessee do tornadoes occur? According to weather.gov, Middle Tennessee, where Nashville is located, gets the most tornadoes, followed by Western Tennessee, where Memphis is located. And in third place is Eastern Tennessee, where Knoxville and Chattanooga are located. The reason tornadoes occur more in the middle and western part of the state is because those areas are flatter than Eastern Tennessee. That said, Hamilton County has more tornadoes than surrounding counties. The majority of tornadoes move from the southwest to the northeast, although some move from south to north, as you can see from Commercial Appeals website. More than half of tornadoes occur at night, and that greatly increases the risk for serious injury and death simply because people are asleep. The data provided here record a very serious EF3 tornado that the greater Chattanooga area suffered last year, the Easter tornado of 2020, and you can see its path as well as read some more information about it. While the greater Chattanooga area is not the most dangerous place in the U.S. for tornadoes, tornadoes do occur. If you're planning to move to or visit Chattanooga, make sure that you're weather aware. Make sure that you're prepared for inclement weather in your home or office and have a safety plan on what to do and where to gather during inclement weather, especially when such weather has potential for tornadic activity. And be sure to check out apps and other online warning systems as they are available. Our second con is Chattanooga's reputation for crime. Now, I'm not going to speak to crime in relation to specific neighborhoods, uh, there are a number of online resources that you could check out for that. And as a real estate agent, I would suggest if you have any concerns that you speak directly to Chattanooga City Police or the Hamilton County Sheriff's Department. According to U.S. News and World Report, Chattanooga does not make the list of the top 25 most dangerous cities in America. What does is St. Louis, where I live more than 15 years. Now, knowing what I know, would I live in St. Louis again? I most certainly would. That said, I feel safer here in Chattanooga but that's just my personal opinion. According to SafeWise, and this is not a plug or an endorsement of SafeWise, Chattanooga ranks 116th out of 123 Tennessee cities in relation to safety. Violent crime in Chattanooga per 1,000 residents is approximately the same as Nashville and is lower than Savannah, Dyersburg, Ripley, Brownsville, Covington, Newport, and Memphis. Look, wherever I've lived, I've always followed the recommendations of law enforcement. Be aware of your surroundings, lock your doors, don't store up anything of value in a vehicle, have a friendly relationship with your neighbors so that they can watch your house while you're away, and if you're planning to go out at night, make sure that you go with somebody else. Our third con is allergies. Look, as a child, I had asthma and allergies in Chattanooga, so I kind of know what I'm talking about, but if you go online today and Google allergies in Chattanooga, you're going to get a lot of conflicting and dated information, and I want to make sure that you're thoroughly aware about what the allergy situation here is in Chattanooga. The Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America provides an annual allergy capitals report. In their most recent report from 2021, Chattanooga does not rank in the top 25 allergy capitals of the U.S. In fact, Chattanooga ranks at number 54 overall, number 57 in the spring, and number 53 in the fall. But if you dig a little deeper, you'll find this nugget. The report looks at three factors to determine its rankings. 
spring and fall pollen scores, over-the-counter medicine use, and availability of board-certified allergists. The truth is that previous editions of this report showed Chattanooga in the top 10, if not the top 5, of allergy capitals in the U.S. And if you speak to a Chattanooga area allergist, he or she will tell you that Chattanooga experiences high, sometimes super high, pollen counts and there's a chance that if you move to Chattanooga, you may experience allergies. The fall ragweed season, which runs from the end of July to the end of October, is challenging for allergy sufferers, including yours truly. Thankfully, Chattanooga has a number of allergy specialists and allergy clinics that can serve your needs. Our fourth con is Tennessee's high sales tax. Now, I know that state and local governments need money to run, but geez louise. The state of Tennessee collects 7%, 4% for food, to which local governments can add an additional percentage. On TN.gov, you can find a helpful chart showing the amount of sales tax that each county in Tennessee, including Hamilton County, where Chattanooga is located, charges for sales tax. The total here is 9.25% for non-food items. One thing to keep in mind is that while sales tax in Tennessee is high, the state does not charge state income tax, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. Another bit of good news is that Tennessee has sales tax holidays, including a back-to-school tax holiday. A traditional sales tax holiday for clothing, school supplies, and computers is held every year, beginning at 12.01 a.m. on the last Friday in July and ending at 11.59 p.m. the following Sunday night. So make sure that you put that in your calendars. Now let's take a look at the pros. Pro is the weather. Now, if you're into gardening, Chattanooga is located in zone 7B, higher elevation 7A, which probably means you can't plant a gardenia outside, but certainly you can plant varieties of rosemary, my favorite herb. Spring is beautiful in Chattanooga with native flowering trees such as redbud and dogwood. Flowers such as tulips and hyacinth do well here, as do iris and native lilies. Summers are hot and muggy, like many areas of the South, and occasionally we have a dry spell, which may do a number on tree leaves and especially certain kinds of lawns. Fall is likewise beautiful with all sorts of colorful leaves. Winters are short, cold, and typically wet. In fact, we get the most rain during the winter months, and we do get a little snow a time or two during the winter, but most everything melts in a couple of days. The second pro is that Chattanooga is remote worker friendly, but don't take my word for it. Take the word of PC Magazine and Travel and Leisure. In 2021, PC Magazine proclaimed that Chattanooga was the best work-from-home city in the nation. Why is that? In comparison to other metropolitan areas, Chattanooga's real estate is cheaper, the municipal government is pro-business, and we have great internet speeds. In the same year, Travel and Leisure went even further by calling Chattanooga the ultimate work-from-home city in the U.S. due to our super-fast internet, cool cafes, green spaces, outdoor fun opportunities, and proximity to much larger cities like Nashville, Atlanta, and Knoxville. Let's admit it, most of us would prefer working at home. At least that's what Good Hire has discovered. In their survey of 3,500 American workers, Good Hire found out that a whopping 68% of Americans would choose remote working options over in-office work, 61% of Americans would be willing to take a pay cut to maintain remote working status, some workers even suggested they would take a 50% pay cut to avoid returning to the office, and 60% of Americans would move to a new city, maybe Chattanooga, just for the opportunity to work remotely in any capacity. So maybe that 60% is you and Chattanooga is a perfect fit. A third pro is that Chattanooga is centrally located in the Mid-South. Now that's a great thing if you have to travel regionally for work, are involved in the shipping business, or let's say even if you just enjoy tailgating at regional college or professional football games. Chattanooga is located approximately two hours from Nashville and Knoxville, Tennessee, Atlanta, Georgia, and Birmingham, Alabama. Now, drive times may be a little bit more or less accounting for distance and traffic, but you get the picture. And if you don't want to drive, Chattanooga's Class C Municipal Airport is only about 10 minutes from Chattanooga's downtown or city center. Our fourth pro is that Chattanooga really is affordable. Now, housing prices here have gone up, just as they have in other places in the country, and just like you, we're dealing with a little bit of inflation, but in comparison to major metropolitan areas, Chattanooga really is affordable. Be sure to check out my video, also on this channel, Five Money Reasons to Live in the State of Tennessee. Our fifth pro is that Chattanooga lies in the state of Tennessee, which has no state income tax, nor does it tax retirement distributions. No, really, you want to check out my Five Money Reasons to Live in Tennessee video. And here are pros six through ten. Truly, there's so much good to share with you about the city of Chattanooga, 
Perhaps some of these will become videos in the future, so be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of them. We don't have a Fifth Avenue, the Magnificent Mile, or Rodeo Drive, but we do have a number of malls, two Whole Foods, a Fresh Market, and a Trader Joe's. Chattanooga has a ton of public parks, greenways, and walking trails, and trailheads have public parking, which makes it super convenient. Chattanooga is pet friendly. At least bring Fido, the world's leading pet travel and lifestyle brand, says so. You can bring Fido to quite a number of Chattanooga patio restaurants, breweries, shops, and even upscale hotels in Chattanooga. Chattanooga is a rock climbing destination. Did you know that there's more rock to climb within a 25 mile radius of Chattanooga than Boulder, Colorado? In addition to natural rock formations, Chattanooga has a number of both indoor and outdoor climbing gyms. Chattanooga is also a well-known mountain biking destination. There are over 100 miles of single track within 15 miles of downtown for beginner, intermediate, and advanced bikers. As you can see, the pros totally outnumber the cons. If you're planning to visit or move to Chattanooga, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave me a note down in the comments section below and be sure to check out my next video, Living in Chattanooga, What I Love and Why Hate. That's coming up next.